Just stay up there. Okay. Well, first of all, I just want to offer my uh, condolences to the Sanders family for the passing of Coach John Sanders. I was a very young coach here at Nebraska, and he was our men's baseball coach at the time, and we shared facilities for about five years together. So sad day in Husker baseball and in Nebraska athletics. So just wanted to start with that. The other thing I wanted to start with is that we're eager, eager to get our season started. Uh, it's been, we've been really fortunate to be outside. Uh, I think with anybody that's about ready to start their season, there's a lot of anticipation and excitement. Uh, I, I will say with this season, the excitement is a calm excitement. Uh, I feel like this team has worked differently than we have in the last few years, and they have earned the right to take the field with confidence coming into this weekend. In what ways have they worked differently? How does that compare to years past? Well, it, so there's, there's many things, and I've talked about some of it before, but it really started last summer when the NCAA extended our ability to do some things virtually. And we've been working really hard with not only rebuilding our culture, but, but setting a standard for the culture, really driven by the players. Uh, and I think you saw that the captains were announced yesterday, and they really led the way. And they led the way all summer, and that's part of the reason that they have, were announced as captains. But then the other thing that we've been very active and proactive about is talking about leadership and helping define it and helping grow it, not just saying, oh, they're a natural leader, because they do have some natural leadership skills, but like any of us that do anything that we have a trade, we need to train it and we need to stay on it and stay with it, and they've done a nice job. So those first two things uh, have really laid a template for what we're trying to build, and, and build slowly, methodically, with a good foundation that's sustainable. What do you think the strength of the team uh, this season is gonna be? So I would say from a, you know, an, an emotional, mental standpoint, the things that I just spoke of with the culture and the leadership. Uh, I think as far as physically, we're, very, we're experienced on the mound. We've got a lot of returning players that, although they haven't played a traditional non-conference, those sophomores, uh, many of them that are going to be seeing a lot of playing time, had 44 games against Big Ten opponents last year. I think that's going to help. Uh, I think really... I've just, I've, the thing that I think is our cornerstone is that we're really not young, even though we might start up to five sophomores. That a lot of them had significant playing time last year. Any of the freshmen, do you think, won't crack the lineup at all? Um, you know, we just have two freshmen on our active roster this spring, and both of them are going to serve more in role play. Uh, behind they're both catchers and Ani Rayleigh is going to really anchor behind the dish but I think that they can come in and have some su substantial time to give her a break from behind the plate but I, I don't see our freshmen you know really playing maybe like uh, you know some years they do like last year they did speaking of Billy Andrews last year had a really good year was all Big Ten as a freshman how have you seen her game ele uh, elevated here over the past year I think the way that you are going to see her game elevate. It might not even be in the statistical column. It's more of how she's matured and how she's working. She's so competitive that sometimes the, the competitiveness, you know, tips over and becomes frustration. And I think she's managing that better. She's got a better, better skills at handling when she doesn't have success because she wants to win so much for the team. So sometimes she would, if she didn't have success offensively, she would take that to defense. I think you're going to see her flip that switch a lot quicker. And that, that's going to help her just be more consistent. Well, she's worked on it a lot with our hitting coach, Diane Miller, because a lot of her frustration comes from the offensive side. You know, in high school, you can hit five, 550, and you come to college and think you're going to do that. And when you hit 300, you think you're a failure. And so just learning to manage even the difference in the numbers and the productivity and understanding what the, the metric is for success in Division One. I. I mean, I think, think she hit 317 last year and did a pretty nice job there at the top of our lineup. That, those, that group of sophomores, I mean, how eager are they and, and the coaches as well to see them take that next step? Uh, they're extremely eager. You know, I talked about the summer and I talked about the captains, but many of them were involved in a lot of our Zoom dialogue as well, and, and there's been a lot of growth and then a lot of work that they've put in. And one of the things I'll say right now is 
This might be a surprise to everyone, so I'm just going to announce it today. Our starting center filler is going to be Brooke Andrews. So, yeah, I see some eyes there. So she was told yesterday, um, and she has, you know, here's what happened. Uh, Sid Gray went down with a knee injury last year. Brooke is a really great athlete, came in and played a solid third base for us. As Sid and Billy, as Sid and, Sid and Brooke came back this, sum, this fall, excuse me, uh, they both have been, off, they're both two of our top eight offensive producers producers. So it's like, okay, well, how do you keep both those bats in the lineup? So literally when Sid came back, put Billy or Brooke, chase, that's what I'm talking about. Put Brooke in the outfield one day and Lori, who coaches our outfield, after the first day we looked at each other and went, we have something here. I mean, she just is really natural out there. And so um, that's probably going to be, and you know, she literally is a red shirt for, or sophomore. Uh, I think Abby Squire has worked her tail off. Uh, Caitlin Neal, KK Kenny. I mean, and on down we go. Where can Courtney Wallace take her game in her final year here? So Courtney had a really nice year last year, but nowhere was she satisfied. And you know, she and I had a discussion the other day, and she said, "Where, where do you think I need the?" what do you think I need to do to take my game to the next level? And I really think for her, it's just a mindset. She needs to trust the work that she's done. She need, needs to believe that she's good enough. I mean, she runs the ball up in the upper 60s, and you know, you equate that to a baseball reaction time, that's upper 90s in baseball. And she's really been working on her off speed. So for her, if she can continue to, to locate like she has been in our head-to-head -head and get that off speed going. I think she takes her game to the next level. I think you're going to see an all-conference performer on the mound. When she came here, I mean, did, I, I know you don't want to speak for her, but do you feel like she put a lot of pressure on her to kind of live up to everything she did in high school? I think anybody that comes from the state of Nebraska and then puts Nebraska on their chest and plays it here at the university puts pressure on themselves and they have to work through that. And I think it happens at different rates for different players. Some it's in their freshman year. For Billy, you know, it might be in her sophomore year because now you've got the high school and then you've got the first team all conference. I think it comes at different times, but I, I would, I would it, it would not be accurate if I said she would, didn't have to deal with that. But I haven't really talked to her too much about that either. How important was it to get uh, Olivia Farrell back for her fifth year uh, from a uh, performance standpoint on the field, but also the leadership role off the field. Yeah, that was a happy day when uh, she said yes to come back. Uh, Liv is really the epitome of the work ethic that we're really trying to build our culture around. And there, there's never been a stone unturned in her whole career here about getting herself prepared to be her best, whether it's with her nutrition, whether it's in the weight room, whether it's her pitching, whether it's just taking care of her body. Uh, she's always, always been at the highest level and really done an excellent job with that. So just to have that role modeling, number one, for our team, and number two, to have that experience on the mound is really important as we head into this year. Do you see Liv and Courtney taking up most of the innings, or do you, or do you think uh, Caitlin... Um, or some others will be able to step up and help you there. Liv, Courtney, and uh, Kaylin Kinney are all right now. That you know they're really interchangeable. And uh, I'll tell you, I won't I won't give roll out the starts, but all three of them will get a start in the first three games. And that's how much confidence we have in all three of them. Ronnie, you guys practiced outside on the first day, and the weather's been unseasonably warm over the past week. Have you had more outdoor practices before a season opener than you've ever had in your coaching career? Is that fair to say, or do you know a time where it's been like this? Undoubtedly. And the fact that we've, you know, there have been times that we've been outside, but because of the, the ground, we haven't been able to get on the dirt because the thaw and the unthaw. But we've actually been on the dirt this week. And uh, it's been, you know, and now we're going to go play indoors, but... Uh, undoubtedly it will help us down the road it's been great it, you know I, I was just talking earlier to have outfielders be in the dimensions of an actual field playing with a fence and a sky just for them alone it's so worth it just to put on our cleats and know if you're going to get a blister and how to work through that because we're not on in cleats indoors so just so many things that go into playing into the your 
confidence in your psyche like you're ready. I think that's really important. We're going to actually scrimmage today, so it'll be fun. Irony, so you guys started the year inside. It's I like know. a cruel joke, isn't I know. it? I know, I know, I know, I know. How nice is the, is it just a, last year was just an all conference schedule, now you get back to a normal schedule. How, how much are the players kind of embracing being able to see teams from different parts of the country or just kind of the non conference schedule? I think, I think they're really um, looking forward to it. And that sophomore class, think of them, they didn't have normal travel last year you know we went to Florida twice and then we kind of went about our business but so for them it's like their first year of having a regular season of travel so that's really fun and I was actually thinking about it this morning too it's been almost two years since we've played a non-conference game and th that's that's refreshing too just to be able to see other other teams I guess that's kind of what I was going to ask you about. How does that non-conference, you know, schedule, especially early on, prepare you for the mm -hmm. I think I think we've set up a really nice, a nice, nicely balanced and competitive conference schedule. Just even this weekend, the fact that five teams that we play are all very competitive, and three of them were in the NCAA's last year, and all three of those teams that were in the NCAA's have all their arms back. So we're going to face good pitching right out of the gate. I think that's really important as we go down the stretch. Um, so I, I feel like this schedule is set up to challenge us early, but also give us an opportunity to really grow some confidence, especially if we have some success over those teams that have already been in postseason as recently as last year. Has this offseason been easier from a COVID standpoint since we've returned slightly more to, to normalcy? Yeah, it, it for sure has been easier. Um, you know, number one, we're just a little more used to some of the protocols that we lived through the year before, and they weren't quite as stringent. You know, so we were able to get to do things uh, sooner than we were last year. Uh, our student athletes aren't testing three days a week. You know, the, the testing protocols are a bit different. So the, the rigors have lessened some. So we've been able to just focus a little bit more on the game itself. Yep, thank you. Thanks a lot, Courtney Wallace. <laughs> All right, Chris, questions for Courtney? How nice has it been to get outside so much here in the preseason? Yeah, it's been nice to be on the dirt, and it's been really nice outside. So we were excited to get out on the dirt. Um, even though our first tournament's inside, it's nice to put our cleats on and try them on so our feet don't hurt. <laughs> what does it mean to be a captain of this team? Um, it was honestly a great feeling to be announced as a captain. Um, we did a lot of work in the summer, like changing the culture and setting standards for our team. So it was an honor to be you know, named as a captain. What do you mean by changing the culture? What, what, what did you have to address, do you think? Um, I think a lot of it was just the mental part of it, um, going in to practice, like not making errors twice in a row, um, just being more realistic about our team, too, and knowing that we, when we, we want to get to postseason, like these are the things that we have to do. So just setting that standard early on in the fall and not trying to figure it out in the spring. Where have you specifically tried to improve your game in the off season? Uh, my biggest thing this past summer has been like working on weightlifting, conditioning, making sure that I can pitch two games in a row if I need to, um, focusing on adding another pitch, and making sure that my changeup is you know postseason ready. What pitch have you added, or what have you been working on? Um, a curveball, and I've been working a little rise here and there. So, what did uh, last year just do for your confidence? Um, for my confidence, I think. Obviously, it wasn't like where I wanted it to be, but confidence-wise, it just gave me um, the opportunity to get more innings in, um, get those game reps in, and it raised my confidence a lot. Where do you hope to take your game this season? Um, my biggest thing working on like that I worked on in the summer was more strikeouts for uh, our team and rolling more double plays for our innings and ground balls. So just getting outs, getting in there, being competitive, It's two days away. You guys play uh, less than 48 hours now. Yes. How ready is this team to uh, start competing again? Um, I think we're ready to go. I mean, it feels like 
se- it doesn't really feel like season's about to start. It doesn't even feel like we're leaving tomorrow, honestly. So I think it's one of those, like, okay, when we get there, everyone's, you know, it's going to be calm. I bet there are little nerves, especially from the underclassmen, but we're ready to go, so I'm excited. What does it mean to get Olivia back here for another year? How much she, can she push, not just the whole team, but you specifically? Yeah, Liv's, Liv is my best friend, um, so I was really excited for her to come back. I knew it was up in the air for a little bit. Um, for the team, she's a vocal leader. She's going to say what it is, and she's going to tell the truth. And I think that was something that we needed um, as a team. We need to hear those things. So I was really happy that she came back. Are you focusing mostly on pitching this year? or are you gonna, are, Is there plans for you to get in the lineup as well? Um, yeah, my main focus is uh, pitching right now. Um, I'm assuming I'm going to hit. Um, be in the lineup wherever coach needs me to go. That's where I'm going to go. Um, I know COVID's still around, so if they need me to go somewhere else, I'm ready to do that too. Any more questions for Courtney? All right, thanks. Thank you. You are up just in a minute. What's the level of excitement to, to get to finally play a game here in a couple of days? Oh my gosh, it's like 10 out of 10 excitement. Um, a lot of us haven't played a full season in a few years. So, and the other half hasn't even played a full season at all in college. So I think that it's going to be really exciting to come together and finally um, go the long haul of season, so. Is there a specific area of your game that you worked on this off season? Um, yes, um, definitely offensively. Um, I think that I could have done a lot better last year. Um, I know that, you know, we tried our best to produce the runs for our pitchers and do all that, but I definitely think that I could have uh, contributed more in that aspect. How much of that, I mean, replacing Tristan is a, is a, that's a big bat to replace. I mean, how much of her departure is leading you to say, okay, I got to step it up this year offensively? So I think with Tristan, um, obviously everyone knows how good of a hitter she is. So I think that with her always being an extra base runner, um, and also Riley Unziker as well, I think that now some of us, all of us, need to step up and kind of be those extra base runners um, to be able to score those runs. Um, Tristan was, you know, a big hitter and a big part of our lineup and team. So I think that, you know, with her gone, it's just going to be about who's going to produce those RBIs, who's going to get on base. Um, but yeah. The captains who were named yesterday, what do you think about those girls? Oh, they're some of my best friends. Um, you know, I when I first came here uh, a few years ago, you know, they were the ones that kind of, you know, took me in under their wing, um, showed me the ropes and everything. Um, I mean, Carly is the positive one, the one that always sees, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel. And Courtney and Liv are more of, okay, let's go. Like, let's do this. Like, we're going to win and... Um, so they kind of fire us up in that aspect. So I think them three, you know, being the captains, it's going to contribute a lot to our motivation and what we can do as a team this year. What do you think this team can accomplish this year? I think we can go all the way. I think we can be anybody out there. And if we just work together and, um, you know, share our common goal, our common expectations for ourselves, then I think that we can go all the way and we can um, really do some damage to other teams. Coach Ravel talked about those virtual summer sessions, kind of helping build leadership and stuff. What did you get out of those and, and 
how do you think that can translate to success this year? Um, so I think that with the summer sessions and just discussing a book that we have read or um, just common quotes or any philosophy that she has for us, it brings us together knowing that like we are not alone what we go through. There's a lot of student athletes, um, there's a lot of softball players out there. And I think that sharing, you know, fear or stress or anything like that, just even if it is on Zoom when everybody can't be there, is just really special to know that, okay, this game is more physical, but we can get through the mental part together. What was the driving factor for you to come back for a fifth year? Um, well, the coaches were very supportive um, of, you know, COVID and everything that happened. But I honestly thought that, you know, you're not going to get a lot of time to keep playing. Like, you know, I've been playing 19 years of my life. This will be the 19th year. But it's also, what am I going to do the rest of my life too? So I think that whatever I could take or get, especially not being here all five years of my career, I think that was the most special part that they did ask me to come back. So. That group of sophomores, I mean, Billy, Caitlin, uh, Cindy, there's some others. What, what, kind of, what, what kind of growth have you seen from them uh, as they prepare for their second season? I've seen a lot of physical growth, um, but I've seen more emotional and mental growth from them. I think that being a freshman and coming in, especially getting opportunities right off the bat, it's scary and you want to step up and be there for your team, but you don't know how because you've never faced these pitchers or you've never been in a situation like this. Um, so I think they have definitely grown on the mental toughness part, um, dealing with failure, which is 75% of our game and everything. So I think the mental part and emotional part from their um, experiences and stuff has definitely grown. Any more questions for Cam? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Cam.
Going straight to questions. You're on business. That's what I am. That's what I do. I appreciate it. No statement. <clears throat> A statement? No. <laughs> I guess what's the next step for your program outside of the tangible, you know, hosting all those sorts of things? What's maybe the next step you can take as you kind of evolve? And uh, yeah, I mean, just that. Um, just having a chance to host a regional, um, being in position to, to play home games. I think that's pretty well documented that that's the. Um, most desirable route to get to Omaha to get to the World Series is to play play at home and um, you know with the crowds that we have the facility that we have you know we feel like we have a pretty good home field advantage so there's we got a long way to go you know this year to start that journey uh, but year in and year out I think you just put yourself in position to play well enough and consistently enough and it starts at the beginning of the year and not you know giving games away that you feel like you you know um, not easing into it. I mean, you just you've got to you've got to go in head first and have the best chance of getting your pitching lined up. The the lineup, the guys you feel like you can count on. I, I do feel like last year playing the conference only schedule uh, made us get to that point maybe a little bit sooner. Uh, but just having that urgency to to do that day in and day out to give us a shot to win enough games to host a regional. I think that's the next step is to get back to that point where you're at least in the conversation every year is to using our great facility for postseason games. You have to kind of remind guys, even guys that were here last year, that, that you have to have that urgency right away now with non-conference games. Yeah, I think it's a daily reminder for all of us that we're not going to fast forward and get back to the spot we were at. I mean, I think that's where it's a tough for an 18 to 22-year-old, let alone for you know us coaches to say, hey, let's just get back to the spot we were at, you know. Um, so it's it's a culmination of preparation throughout the entire year and and uh, you know things that we harp on daily um, gets probably a little old for our guys to hear it but it's what they hear every day. You named the four captains and Nebraska went a while without naming captains. What what are the standards that those captains sort of operate? Yeah, relentless enthusiasm, showing up every day with a great attitude, great mindset. Um, they're setting the standard every day. Um, they're, they're team players. They're selfless. They're going to do uh, – you know, they've got to be able to be willing to do what it takes to be great team players before they can ask their teammates to do that. Um, and uh, they just – they've got to show up and be very consistent. So uh, they don't have to all be exactly the same. I mean, they're all, they've all got different personalities – um, and we want them to be themselves, and we don't want them to feel like they've got to be coaches either, because um, that's not, it's hard enough to have to take care of your own business as a player. Um, but they care an awful lot. And I feel like just having certain guys, you know, the team has input on it, the coaches have input on it, um, it gives them a sense of um, pride, I think, getting named that. And then also just they have to hold themselves to that standard every day. So um, I'm excited about the group that we have to lead us characteristic that, that those four guys share and and is there a little extra value too that three of those guys are from within the state yeah I, I think they all share that um, their care factor is really high um, I think it's easy for their teammates to see every day how much they care um, they don't even have to say a word without you know everybody knowing that in the in the building and on the field um, and they're some of our more talented players, too. And so I think that those things go hand in hand. Um, it doesn't always have to be that way. It doesn't always have to be your three hole hitter or your, um, you know, your Friday starter. But you would hope that those guys would be in consideration to be your leaders because they're some of your best players. So and I've said this before, the best teams are the ones that the best players are setting the, the highest standard. When it comes to Kyle Perry, what role is he competing for this year? Uh, KP will be competing for an early weekend spot. Um, you know, I think he's a guy that at this point in his career, whatever role we put him in, I think he would excel. Um, I, I think he his skill set will allow him to um, navigate through the lineup multiple times, which is what you want in a starter. He's going to be very competitive. So, um, you know, I think he's he's going to be fighting for, you know, that, that top spot in the rotation, whether it be Friday or Saturday right now. Um, but he'll be willing to fulfill whatever role that is. But I think right now we're looking at the best way he can help the team is at the front of the game as a starter. Well, how much confidence do you have in Griffin Everett, not only offensively, but defensively? 
Yeah. Um, he's got a, an awful lot of experience already c catching a lot of games last year. Um, you know, we were talking about as a staff and even with Griff, um, this time last year, there was still some uncertainty, you know, because he was catching Division One pitching for the first time, getting in his first Division One game. Um, he has the absolute trust of all of our pitchers at this point in time, um, just all the bullpens that he catches, just his leadership. You know, that's the next step that he's taken um, as a catcher is just you, you hear his voice a lot more and his body language is exudes a lot more confidence. Um, so he is just in a much different place than he was at the, this time last year, which we knew we were getting a good player. Um, and you kind of saw him, you know, play – himself in a pretty prominent role offensively at the end of the year last year. And I feel like he's just really set himself up to have a very consistent year, um, both offensively and defensively. The offensive piece of it too, I mean, how much is that helped by him being more comfortable too? Uh, and, and, and he had a pretty good fall. Yeah. Yeah, today. yeah I think there's, there's a lot of that goes into that, you know, just feeling – um, for him right now, the difference between now and the beginning of the year last year, and even at times, even at the end of the year when he was going better, um, he, he's just – he's able to get the barrel to the fastball a lot more consistently. So that lets you relax a little bit more in the box. And um, I think he just feels like he's in a really good spot um, all the way around. And, yeah, I mean, he just – he feels very confident because of that. Talked about being in the kind of seven to eight guys in the mix for rotation or starting spots. How has that maybe whittled down or, or had more clarity now that you guys have had a chance to get out there a little bit? Yeah, yeah. we've had multiple live outings now for our pitchers. So um, there's, you know, we need four starters the first weekend uh, with the four game series. So I think there's, there's probably a couple of guys maybe that have been more consistent than others um, in that position in particular. Um, we also have to look at the best way our pitching staff sets up. So we have some guys that maybe could certainly be a starter, um, but maybe the team needs them to be out of the pen, and that, that kind of helps line up the pitching a little bit easier. So, um, you know, we're starting to pare that down a little bit. This will be the last uh, – we'll scrimmage Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week, and two of those will be outdoors. We've only uh, had the Saturday scrimmage the last two weeks outside. So we've only seen a certain set of pitchers that have been able to get outside and throw on the mound, which that makes a difference too. Um, so we'll see a little bit different set of guys this week that will be able to pitch outside and compete um, in a different setting. So um, I would anticipate having that nailed down after this weekend. On the other side, in terms of closing job and stuff like that, how many guys are still in the mix for that potentially? For closer, um, I would say the development of Colby Gomez at this point in time is has really kind of helped solidify some things with our pitching staff. I going into it, um, what he's had to come back from physically, not a whole lot of guys have been able to do, and so. He's put in a ton of hard work. Um, I'm thrilled where he's at physically, mentally. I mean, he's he's a fourth year guy now in college, and he just he takes care of his business like a grown up does. And so um, he's he's got the experience to close. I, I mean, I think he's certainly a guy that um, if he continues to to stay healthy and and do what he's doing, he's going to get opportunities at the backside of the game for sure. And there's probably two or three other guys that if he's not available. Do we have to ease him in? How's he going to do on back-to-back -back days? You know, those type of things. I think there's certainly other guys that are more than capable, and there's, we've got two or three of them that we feel like we could close with too. What was it kind of like for him getting back and facing live hitters again, kind of given what he's been through for the last year and a half? I mean, for the team too, I mean. Yeah, uh, you know, Colby is a baseball player. I mean, he's he's he came in as a two-way guy. You know, tried to transition to a starter, then then he got hurt, so he was he had to do a lot of observing. Um, now he's hitting again for us, playing some first base. Um, I think he's just kind of got a he's got a rejuvenated mindset when it comes to some of that stuff, and I think he's the type of guy that will feed off that a little bit. I, I've never one second will ever worry about him competing like that. That's the thing. Like so him having, you know, throwing his bullpens or having a hitter, a live hitter in there doesn't really change a lot because he's just, he's just going to attack. Like he's going to, he's going to bring his best stuff at you. So um, there hasn't been a whole lot of, of wondering, you know, where his mindset is at. Once we saw that he was healthy, um, feel like he's gonna he's gonna go compete, and he's been in the moment before, and um, he's seen the ups and downs. I mean, he's 
um, he's been through a lot in his career. So I um, feel like he's just a guy that's going to go out there and compete. Coach, with re reserve seats being sold out at Tim Market Park, I mean, you've been around it as a player and, and now as a coach. I mean, how intense can a dugout be, that home dugout be on a Friday night at Oxfield? Yeah, first of all, I'm thrilled to hear um, just the way the season ticket sales have gone. And, you know, I've said this before, a big reason that, that I chose to come to Nebraska, and I know a lot of our players, is just that, that fan support, you know, that, that unbelievable fan base that we have and, and um, them getting behind us. But, yeah, I feel like we've got a, a great home field advantage. Um, it, it, they help bring the energy in the stadium and um, gives us a boost. And um, I know our guys are thrilled to, to get back out and, and play at home when that happens and um, to know that we've got – you know, the, the season tickets sold out, I think, is, um, is a testament to how passionate our fan base is. How valuable is it to? I'm going to get sorry. Get to... Coach, what's, what's impressed you the most about how your team has handled you know, the success of last season? Um, I don't ever hear them talk about it. I mean, I, there's never really been any sort of indication that we feel like we've arrived or that, you know, we've, we've got this fake confidence going on because of, you know, what past success we've had. Like, there's just never really a conversation that's had. I don't ever feel like I've got to go uh, put anybody in their place because we're getting, you know, ahead of our skis a little bit, so to speak, because we feel like we've arrived. I mean, I just think the the humble nature with about the quiet confidence, I would say, that our team operates with, I'm, I'm proud of because they're – confident enough to know that, that we're going to be good, but also um, humble enough to know that we got to show up and work every day to get where we want to get to. So um, that part of it, I, I just don't even really have to worry about. I mean, we talk about it daily in terms of just being in the moment, um, but I'm just proud of how they, they operate. They, they, we just don't, they're very low maintenance and, and we don't have to put them in their place very often. Sorry. Oh, yeah. sorry. How valuable is it to get outside? In, in February, I mean, is that is that overblown, or is that really pretty helpful as you guys get ready for the season? It is not overblown, um, especially if you're an outfielder, because you actually get to see balls off the bat, and we're trying to break in some, you know, potential new spots in the outfield, and um, so that part of it is huge. And it's just some of the other stuff that you don't really get to get done indoors very well. The the cuts and relays where you're actually on a baseball field, and um, just as a hitter, just kind of it's good and bad. I think. The good that comes from hitting inside all the time is you got tunnel vision, literally. Like you're not worried about a fence and trying to chase, you know, power. So I think that serves you well at times. So even when we hit on the field, we've got to make sure that we're dialed in that way. But um, yeah, it's valuable. I mean, getting used to playing and, you know, even we've had warm weather, but it's still not super comfortable all the time, like a lot of wind or the elements, those type of things. I mean, you can't, those are things you can't really you know, duplicate indoors. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been huge that we've had the weather that we've had to get outside. Is this as much as you've been outside here, whether coach, player? As far as I can remember, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't remember as having as many live at-bats outside. Uh, maybe a practice here and there where you get to take ground balls or fly balls, just sneak out when it's 38 degrees or something. But having having full scrimmages uh, this many early, I think it's uh, probably the most we've seen. Yep. I know Rob Childress' role is limited with the players, but how helpful is it to he, for him to be just kind of a sounding board for you and he can give his feedback to you whenever you need it? He's he's the best of the best. I mean, I, I'm – super thankful that he's here um, for not only me but our entire coaching staff his wisdom his knowledge he the things he's seen um, he just is it's invaluable for us to, for him to be at practice and be able to say hey did you notice this you know in practice or him to put his arm around a guy you know that maybe needs a boost of confidence that um, you know just just that mentor role and and he's not only mentoring the players but the coaches too I mean he's been all of our mentors at one point or another and that that's just continued so he just brings a um, a great mindset to the team to the field the toughness part that we're seeking to be all about you know he's lived it for years and years and years so um, he, he brings a, an unbelievable dynamic to our staff. Do you have a sense yet, I guess, of what you guys can kind of be offensively, given how many new pieces you're going to have and, and how that's going to shape out? Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, 
you know, you're going to see some guys that have taken a step forward that, that are returners. We've already spoken about Griff, and I think there's some other guys in there that are um, much improved offensively. Um, we got a, a lot of freshmen that came in, and again, the thing I always look to is like, you can pretty easily tell right away if a guy belongs. Just can he get to a good velocity without cheating to it? And we've got several guys that, that fit that mold. So we hit more home runs this fall, I think, than I th than any of us thought we would. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily a trend. I mean, we've seen it a little bit this spring too. Um, I know it's hard to tell sometimes in the indoor. It's always a, a debate. Um, <laughs> the exit velocity and the the launch angle does it add up? Like, is it a home run or a double? But um, I think we're going to impact the ball. I think we're going to be um, pretty balanced in terms of, you know, being diverse. Um, so, yeah, I think that, that we're going to have a chance to, to have a solid offense top to bottom. I don't think there's any easy outs in there. And I think kind of the trend you'll see is most of the guys that we roll out there are going to have a chance to impact the ball. So um, that's always a good feeling to have that if the pitcher makes a mistake, you can make him pay with an extra base hit. Be able to run the, the way that you did last year too. I know a lot of it was hallmark. But. Yeah, usually when you have teams that have a lot of stolen bases, it's you have one guy that's got quite a few, and, and hallmark led the Big Ten, I believe, or close, you know, to leading. Um, I think Sartori's got a shot, you know, if he gets on base enough to be that type of, of player in terms of stolen bases. I think we've got a handful of other guys that can do it. Um, we're going to push the envelope and see, especially early. Um, we, we're athletic. I mean, I think we've got plenty of guys in there that, you know, maybe a guy like Matthews jumps up and goes from a seven stolen base guy to a 15 stolen base guy. And then you kind of start to um, feel like you've got some dynamic pieces there. Any other questions for Coach? Okay, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Any questions for senior captain Kyle Perry? How would you be, be named a captain? What was that like? Oh man, it's uh, uh, it's it's an honor, um, very humbling experience um, to be looked at by my teammates and coaches as uh, as a leader and uh, and to be you know uh, a, a Nebraska kid and to uh, be named a captain. I think it just uh, it means a whole lot in itself, and it, I think to be from here and. It means a whole lot more too, and so it's a uh, it's something that I'm gonna you know look on for the rest of my life with a lot of pride, um, this honor and uh, and uh, yeah, and the guys that I'm surrounded with, uh, it's it's a it's a real uh, it's a real honor. So, what's what's the balance with that? Where maybe you take on some different roles, as captain, but you still want to be who you are and yeah. kind of be within yourself. Is, is there a kind of balance there? Yeah, nothing nothing's gonna change with me. I mean, I'm you know I try to be you know light. Um, and everyone knows that I'm, I'm competitive. I'm gonna, you know, go out and and uh, and compete when you know it's my time to really throw down. Um, and I'm gonna want to win regardless of what sort of position I'm in. Um, and like you guys saw it last year, I was hurt, and I, you know, I was still all fire, fired up for the team even when I had a zero percent chance of, of pitching. So I'm not gonna change myself. Um, and I think that's that's what makes the uh, the group of captains this year so special is we got four completely different personalities, but uh, we got four guys that want to win, you know, um, more than more than a lot of other people. So uh, no, and I'm yeah, I'm just gonna stay stay doing what I've been doing, and uh, and I think that helps me to my advantage. And uh, yeah, so I'm you know, I'm pretty excited to be uh, to be in that position, but I don't think much is gonna change with me. What did you learn about that group last year of captains? I mean, just having a front row seat to what they do. And like, how does having good captains translate to what you guys do on the field? Yeah. Uh, well, it's just, just you look to four guys as, uh, as those guys that are going to lead you into battle. Um, and so to learn from those four guys last year, you had, it's the same, the same sort of deal. You got four guys, four different personalities and four different playing styles. You know, it's, uh, and it's, it's something awesome to look at for, you know, you got a group of 30 some guys, um, but they can look to these four guys and, uh, and at least relate to one of them, you know, 
uh, with them personally. So I think uh, I think it's great to have a nice little blend of of personalities, and uh, and we learned a lot from those four guys last year, and uh, and I think they're really going to help us um, with what we learned um, going into this year now with us. So maybe the next step for this this program, obviously you want to host regionals and things like that, but maybe how do you how do you get there, and what's kind of the the vision you guys kind of see for yourself? Well. <clears throat> Coach has said it, and uh, we've we've reiterated plenty of times that it's just being where our feet are, um, you know, and taking each day one day at a time, one pitch at a time, whatever it may be. Um, and I think that's that's how we're going to get um, to where we need to be and where we want to be, and that's uh, ultimately Omaha. So I think as long as we keep doing that, next thing you know, we're going to be, you know, we're going to be looking up at the TD Ameritrade. Or I guess what is it now? It's Charles Schwab. Schwab. Charles Schwab. Pardon me, but yeah, that's that's what it's going to be. And we're going to be looking up at that sign now. Um, you know, when if we keep stacking the days we need to be doing um, and doing the things that that we need to do on a daily basis to uh, to get to where we need to be. So that, I think that's the next step for us. What does it mean to be playing alongside with so many other Nebraska kids? Oh, it, it's awesome. Like I said, um, it means it means a whole lot to to even be a part of something like this and to be a Nebraska kid. There's uh, it, it does mean a little bit more. Um, yeah. And I think with a lot of in-state guys, um, we all share that that um, that same bond of, you know, of being here and um, and it meaning as much as it does. I think uh, I think it's really great and it's an honor to to be alongside a lot of in-state guys. How are you? Uh a different pitcher than you were at the end of last year? Are you working on uh, new pitches or, or what's kind of your repertoire? At this uh, just trying to just trying to be mature with uh, with my approach, not trying to be too fine. Um, I've just I've just been trying to make minor minor adjustments with things to make myself better and uh, and at the same time do do everything I can to, to possibly help this team win. And uh, and my competitive nature is going to, you know, shine on the mound and you know, I think that's what that's what drives me through as a pitcher uh, more times than not. So I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing and not not trying to make too many drastic changes um, when I'm on the mound. But you know, fine tuning a lot of things. Or how much value was there in being able to get back last year, even for a handful of, yeah. of, of spot, spots? How much did that help you just kind of get? Oh, it was great, and I mean, it was no, it was a no-brainer to you know to rehab back. Um, and however many months that was, just to just have an opportunity to play with those guys uh, one more time because I know a lot of guys uh, were coming back for that for their you know their COVID years and uh, and nothing was gonna keep me away from from having another opportunity to to uh, have those guys behind me while uh, while I was on the mound. So it was it was great and I think it, it helped me a lot to uh, and to get that experience now in the in the regional and and uh, and those experiences up until then so I think it helped me a lot and uh, and yeah it was a no-brainer to to come back and do that for us. If you mentioned the COVID year like do you consider this to be your senior season given that you technically would have another year? Yeah and, at all? <laughs> well something we learned with COVID was not to take anything for granted not take a day for granted not to take a practice for granted so um, yeah I'm looking at this Heck, I'm looking at today like today is my last day, and that's uh, and when, like I said, you keep stacking those sort of days, then uh, then you can you can stack them into something uh, with great potential. So, um, so yeah, like yeah, I'm gonna look at this like it like it is my last year, and then um, you know a year from now we could be looking at a different situation. Who knows? So um, so yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna take each day one day at a time, but treat every day like it's my last. You were pretty limited in those starts last season. What's it like knowing that you've got a full season ahead of you and you're not really limited this season? Well, it's great because uh, not every year for me here in, in Lincoln has looked the same. Freshman year was probably the most normal year I had, and, and I was just a young buck that had no clue what was going on around me. So, um, you know, it, it's going to be great to, to have, uh, you know, something set in stone uh, in some sort of way, you know, a little bit of structure there, and it's not as many question marks. Um, that I'm looking at um, leading into this year. So uh, it's going to be great to have, you know, some sort of uh, solidarity and uh, structure going into this season. Kyle, the pitching staff as a whole, how do you describe what you guys might be able to accomplish this year, knowing that, you know, two of your weekend starters from a year ago are, are no longer with the program? Yeah, um, geez, the pitching staff, that's one thing that um, looking after last year, we lost, a, you know, a few great pieces. Um, but I think we're coming back. And it might sound crazy. We're coming back even stronger. Um, 
and I have touched on it. We we're all really competitive, and uh, to think back and or and think of you know who who's going to be in our rotation, you know you don't. I can't really give you a solid answer. I could give you you know five different rotations that would all be successful. You know, and that's I think is a great problem to have. Um, to be sitting there scratching your head at what what your you know opening weekend rotation is going to look like. So um, I think to be in that position is great, and I think we're filling a, a lot of shoes that needed to be filled. And uh, we're you know we're getting Colby Gomez back, and if you guys remember my freshman year and his freshman year, it was that man was an All American, and he you know he saved a lot of games um, for us, and uh, and to have him back is electric, and he looks pretty healthy and pretty darn good. So. Outside as much as you have here mm -hmm. over the offseason or preseason, helped you get a better gauge of what this staff actually looks like. Oh yeah, I mean, there's just there's just no there there's there's no one that's timid right now. It's like everyone's diving head first into it, and and I think a lot of guys that are returning, they've seen how harsh this weather in Nebraska can be, and uh, and to see you know 50 degree days in late January and February, it's you know it's a great blessing to be here and uh, and to have those days. So I think no one takes a day for granted around here, and and uh, and th so to have those days, it helps us out a lot, and uh, I think everyone's really shining through when we get all that room out there to to move around and have fun. Kyle, the reserve season tickets sold out today. How excited are you guys not just to play at home, but to play in front of fans who are probably just as excited as you are? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's it's awesome. Everyone knows that the fans here are great. And uh, and for the fans to recognize, you know, what they have in front of them while it's going on, you know, a lot of winning. And that's what we're going to try. That's our product that we're going to be trying to put out each each and every weekend. And so for them to for them to, you know, be on notice and, and see us out here, you know, put in the work to to have them out. I think that's uh, I think that's awesome. And and you know what we're going to get from the from the fans and, and they know what they're going to get from us. So I think it's really nice to see that um, even leading into this uh, opening week. I think it's great. So. On the flip side, you know, with, with your offense, what, what are you seeing from the, the bats that are coming back? Oh man, just a lot, just a lot of talent, a lot of consistency, um, just a lot. You know, swinging bats are dangerous. That's what our, that's what Coach Harvell likes to preach, and uh, and uh, you know, we like to see a lot of aggressive swings from our from our offense. And uh, regardless if that's against me or whoever it might be, I love seeing it because at the end of the day, they're on my team, and, uh, and that's what I like to see. So a lot of good signs from the offense coming into the season. A lot of them are tough. Everybody's a tough out. Yep. Are, you, are you guys seeing that as well? Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's it's. Uh, you might think you have a guy, and then he, uh, you have him, you know, down two strikes, and uh, and he keeps fouling balls off. It's like you know, it frustrates the living heck out of you as a pitcher. You know, when you're throwing live to him, but uh, but you know, if they're going to put up that fight against you, they're going to put up a fight against anybody. So, um, yeah, no, it a lot of great signs. So. Thanks, Kyle. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Open up the floor for questions for Senior Captain Griffin Everett. <clears throat> mentioned you from a long way from where you were maybe at this time last year can you kind of just describe uh in what way that might be or whether that's intangibly or, or what you've done on the field? um yeah I mean obviously coming in last year I was a, a new face to the rest of the program and I thought I had a lot of experience in my belt but obviously it was a lot you know to take in the way we do things here and just really having that full year of experience and then even that regional experience down in Fayetteville I think just that really is contributing to my confidence and my ability to lead the team this year. Coach mentioned you guys don't talk much about last year, whether it's the regional or success you had. Anything have you have you kind of seen that among the guys as far as just being focused on what's what's in front of you and maybe not looking back? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. And that's been something that we've been really trying to stress uh, since day one is just taking each day at a time, uh, not looking ahead because it's really easy to do that, especially <clears throat> when we're getting you know, a week away from game time, just really stressing, like KP said, being where our feet are and really just attacking each day and getting better in that regard. What does it mean to you to be named captain? Oh, it's an honor, uh, especially being from Lincoln, Nebraska, born and raised here. Uh, it's truly special to me. Uh, it's something that maybe I didn't even know I was going to be, you know, coming out of the junior college. But, yeah, it's just really an honor and means a lot to me.
kind of see your role as in that role? Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to lead by example. Uh, the guys are never going to have to question my intentions. I'm not always going to be a man of many words like KP is, but uh, I've learned the right times to, you know, speak up and chances when I can teach guys and bring them along. What is it like to catch for Kyle? Uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. He's going to bring a lot of energy. He's going to pound the zone. Uh, he's going to be fearless up there. And when you know behind the plate that your pitcher is going to come at you and he's going to trust you, it makes it a lot easier on my job. I know you touched on this already, but maybe what's the next step for you guys? Obviously, you want to host a regional and all those things like I always talk about. But how do you kind of get to that point and take that next step? Uh, you know, I think we're trending in that right direction, uh, just continuing to attack each day and not look ahead. And I think if we keep doing that, we're on we're on the right path. What do you see from Obi Gomez in the offseason, not just uh, maybe as a pitcher, but also as a hitter? Oh, uh, you know, he's a guy that I personally have seen come a long ways as well, too. Uh, I've kind of brought him under my wing a little bit. We spend a lot of time together. And, uh, you know, he's just he's really amped up his work ethic and the way he attacks each day. And, you know, the results are we see it all on the field. So he's been impressive and he's going to continue to stack days. And I think he's going to be a big piece of our team. What's, what stood out about him to you, especially? I mean, because you weren't here when he was healthy the last time. So what seeing him kind of full go for the first time? Wasn't yeah, I mean, I guess I've just he's never really been healthy. So I've never got the chance to see it. And now that, you know, we get the chance to see what he does, it's impressive. And I like what he's been doing. Griffin, Coach Bolt said that you guys are confident enough you'll be good, but humble enough you're going to continue to work every single day. How much of that is a reflection of your head coach, or is that just kind of the DNA of the personalities in the clubhouse? Uh, I think it has a lot to do with both. Um, coach Bolt's always going to stress that every day. You know, He's never going to allow us to look ahead, and it's just the ability of our group to be able to buy into that and you know, stick to it. On you guys a little bit. Seems uh, like every day is like so intense, and you guys got to bring it every day. Oh uh, no, I don't think so at all. I mean, we also uh, stress the importance of having fun and going out there and playing the game of baseball because, you know, that's why we all came here. We love the game, and so you know, just not putting too much pressure on it while also knowing that the importance of stacking those days on top of each other. Having seen all the the pitchers work here in the off season, is there? The pitch from a pitcher that has stood out to you? I mean, Nebraska's had a lot of those over the years, but is there a certain pitch where you're like, whoa, that's going to be fun to see how an opposing hitter might handle this pitch? Um, you know, Shea Shanneman's slider cutter is always electric when it comes out of his hand. He gets a lot of swing and misses out of it. Um, Cody Frank's got the slider change, which was a new pitch for me last year. I'd never even heard of a slider change before, so that was pretty interesting. And then Colby's got a splitter, and that's not a pitch that you see too often thrown by many guys. So that's a pitch that I'm kind of learning still. Got to learn the shape of it and get comfortable with catching him a little more too. Any other questions for Griffin? Okay, thanks Griffin. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Griffin.